Welcome to the Moms Making Six Figures podcast, where it's all about real women, real stories, real inspiration. And now your host and creator of Moms Making Six Figures, Heidi Bartolotta. So thank you for joining me. Thank you for doing this and taking your time to spend with me. I think it would be nice to start out by you talking a little bit about your background and your professional journey to where you are now. Sure. So it's funny, I didn't know I'd land in human resources. Um, I was a marketing major and and really starting out in high school, um, did marketing as a part-time for an investment company. And um, so I thought I'd wanna go to New York, do marketing, um, but my husband decided not to leave Florida and, um, and didn't realize though graduating with marketing, everything is sales. So um, many of us coming out of college became corporate contract recruiters. You know, we, we were joined a professional services company as recruiting, and um, I did that for about eight years, and um, then moved into corporate recruiting, which opened up a whole new world to me on, on human resources of, of you know getting to work with the business and really do all of their HR strategy work. And so, um, so I've, I've been in professional or in human resources now for over twenty years, and I love it. Yeah. What do you love about it? What is it that you love? I think it. I love helping people. That's just my. Um, it's my my core. It's you know. Um, it, it's something that even in my personal life, it's about helping my friends. You know, and um, so I get to help people. I get to support people. What have so you're at kind of the pinnacle of success in your industry and in what you do? What hurdles? Talk about some of the struggles. We have a lot of younger listeners that are aspiring to, you know, six figures um, and then others that are going to be kind of sidelined to you in their industry. But what what struggles did you go through and some of your skill set in in managing that and maneuvering through that? Yeah, I think some of the struggles I had were, were really against myself, you know, the expectations I put on myself. Um, of, of trying to measure myself against others and, and then just having to come into my own to realize, do it your own way. You know, you don't have to um, put some of this, you're only putting the pressure on yourself, the others aren't doing that. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I had many leaders among the way, along the way um, teach me that, tell me that. And um, I just was trying to hit this mark that um, was probably too hard on myself, it was too unattainable, and I, I was missing out on the things around me. And so I had, again, many leaders along the way that, that would just tell me to, to take a step back and breathe. You, you don't need to. And, and so I think early on, that was my struggle of, um, somebody said to me some really great advice, stop gripping the bat so much. Um, and so from there, then it came into the struggles of just trying to realize there is no balance, but what does balance look like? And then those, the judgments there of, you know, mm-hmm. um, my, I do use daycare. I do use, you know, and what does that look like? And, and you know, when you come back into your friend circles and have to talk about you're a working mother and, and it's different. It's not you're working because you have to. It's because you want to. Mm-hmm. And that being so foreign to a lot of my friends to say, wow, Heather, you want to do this, mm-hmm. you know, and, and um, but that was what I always knew um, that. You know, if I, I needed to first satisfy myself to then make my family happy. And so just trying to not um, listen to everybody outside and do what, you know, what makes me happy. So you touched on three things that I think would be really amazing to dive into. One of them, which I think so many women do, is the comparison game. Mm-hmm. And um, it's something that you that it is in your head, yeah. as you said, it was really you doing it to yeah. yourself. Yeah. So how did you pull yourself out of that? Was it a mentor that really made you aware of it or did you start to see it? Yeah, I think I, I started to see it and it was enough of them telling me, but I can think back to a moment of after I had my, my son, um, we did not work from home at the company I worked for. It, it, working from home was, was still forming. I mean, this is, you know, I'm still in my twenties and, um, but he was getting called out for always having a runny nose, you know, and, and I'd have to wait till the, 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 they would always call him out. It would be lunchtime. The doctor's office isn't open. I'd have to literally get a note from the doctor's office to bring him back to daycare. And luckily I, I worked and, and lived close to each other, but, um, my boss would make accommodations for me to work from home. He, he realized it. And, 
but again, I was judging against, I was the only one doing this, you know, mm -hmm. and, and I mm -hmm. felt the pressure of, they're all questioning me, why is Heather doing it? And he finally just said, Heather, you work harder than anybody here. I know the stress you're putting on yourself. It's not there. You're, you're, you're delivering, you're meeting your goals, stop. And then he really even tried to say, and you're being a role model for others, stop. Show them how this can be done. So, um, so powerful. Yeah, he really, you know, that I think was, it, it's still to this day, it's something that always stands out of, of, and now I think with my team, it's about showing them I've lived it. I've been in their shoes, mm -hmm. you know, especially with, um, with right now, all of us working from home, many of my team members have had babies and I try to make them know it's okay. Put her on your lap. I want to see her, you know, it's, this is okay. And, mm -hmm. and, um, and so kind of doing what he did for me, you know, back then. Yeah. So I was going to ask you about that. That was the second one is you talked about that elusive balance. We always say balance, yeah. but it doesn't exist. Right. No. And it's so radically different for each woman based on their situation and their children and them and their career path. Right. And right. how did you, it sounds like he helped a lot with that, but how did you come to terms with that? Yeah. I think it was realizing and even struggling with my husband in the conversation. I remember him coming to me one day going, I realize Heather, this is you. This is just you. you I've, I've asked you to change companies. I've asked you to do different things throughout, you know, throughout the career, which, which I would do. And, and then he's like, but this is you, this is what makes you tick. And it's not fair for me to do that anymore. This is, this is, we need to now figure out a different way, you know, of me to get um, us to get into the family and how we're going to do this. But I think it's about having that realization that I'm never going to be this person that I'm, I'm setting out to be. It's just, it's not me. It's not my makeup. Mm -hmm. And, and I'd be losing something if I tried to do that. Um, and so I think it was early on the struggles of trying to fit who I thought this mother needs to be of coming home and making the meals and, and I don't cook, but coming home and doing that, you know, and then realizing that it's just, it, instead I can give it in different ways. And then what are the things I can give versus, you know, what I'm thinking the perfect person needs to, mother needs to do. And I think it's so powerful what you said that when you are who you really are, like mm -hmm. at the core, when you're you, you're yeah. so much better for the people around you. Right. So being able to own that yeah. and be in that is such a powerful thing and a powerful statement. Yeah. Not and to not apologize you. for it too, yeah. you know, to not yeah. feel you have to, to be sorry for being who you are. Yeah. So true. So six figures. I asked this question of all of my guests. Do you remember when you hit six figures and as a female, what that felt like emotionally? Yeah. So when I hit it, so I think actually there was a first milestone that I tried to do and, um, I didn't have much of a, a male influence growing up, but my father-in-law became a male influence to me. And I remember graduating, he would, um, from college being with my, my, my husband, my, my boyfriend at the time. And I would use a lot of the guidance from him that he would give to my husband, that my husband would come home and tell me, I, I kind of measured myself off of some of that. Mm -hmm. And I remembered my first milestone was trying to make three times your age. I have no clue where that comes from, but that was in my head of, I need to first be able to, to hit, you know, so if I'm 25, I want to hit at least 75,000. Yep. That milestone I remember hitting and just feeling like, okay, I've, I've, cause in my head, that was the business model, you know, mm -hmm. whatever, you know, so I remember that then I had to take a step back in, um, because again, I, I, I was in a sales commission role and I just found that it was very hard for me to, um, to dedicate the time I needed to keep the sales commission up. And I felt like I, I wasn't hitting some of my goals at the time and, and um, decided to go into corporate. And I, I had to take a step back and, and start over again in a way. Um, so I had come just close to the six figures when I made that decision. And, um, and it was a big, it was a big jump back. <laughs> but so starting over again, and by the time I actually did hit the six figures, I was in a different profession of HR. I, I was more in a generalist role. That accomplishment was just huge because I, because of the journey I had gone through to get right. there, and you know and and um, rebranding myself, reeducating myself, just as the development I did, um, you know. But but throughout, I never realized how motivated I was by money. Um, which thinking back, I'm like <laughs> I had two jobs in high school. You know what? How did I miss that? Um, but again, I, I remember that feeling of okay the, of the learnings of it, and then finally hitting those six figures and, and looking back saying, okay, you took a step back and still got here, you know, and, mm -hmm. and that, that part I remember. Yeah. So one of the 
things that you brought up that I think um, could be very impactful for those that are listening is you mentioned taking a step back. Mm -hmm. And I think for a lot of women, what happens is they're in a profession and they're maybe even excelling, but they realize this isn't really where I want to be. This isn't, you know, five, 10 years down the road, what's going to really make me come alive. Right. But when you've gotten so far to take that step back, to have enough trust in yourself, I think, to do that and know I can recreate somewhere else. Yeah. Will you talk about that? Because I watch women struggle with that. Yeah, no, definitely. And, and it's being in human resources, I coach a lot of, we hire a lot of people straight from college. And, and so this is a conversation I have with a lot of, of individuals. Um, so it's both, it's both sides. I think that number one, it starts, you've mentioned it, the confidence. I've always been a confident person. I've always have, I'm an only child. I have very, a lot of confidence in myself, <laughs> but it's trusting yourself and knowing that you own your success and I think the huge thing for me throughout my whole career is realizing I have a tribe and realizing I have sponsors out there for me and leveraging their guidance and learning from them. And I think, you know, between both of, of those is, is really what helped me make that leap. It, it was my confidence in myself and then learning from others to say, okay, you can do this. There, there is a solution and you just need to own your, your own success. I think, again, that's another incredible point because some women will think, oh, but if I'm, if I'm relying on someone else or it's almost like a show of weakness instead of strength in taking someone else's, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. It's vulnerability. Yeah. It's, it and I've, I've really learned that, that it's okay to be vulnerable. And actually, the more vulnerable you are, the more people connect with you and then they want to help you succeed. And so I see so many um, women specifically who think they have to be a certain way of, of closing off. And it actually, I feel like it hurts them. Mm -hmm. You know, that collaboration, that teaming, that trusting, you really need to trust others. And um, of course, you know, I, I love it when I'll have family members or somebody reach out and say, well, you know, you can't trust people in the corporate world. And, and that's not my experience. I actually trust more. And, and some of my successes have been because I trusted and I never would be where I was if I didn't actually trust somebody else, you know, and, and so, yeah. So you mentioned you mentor a lot of younger professionals. What do you see in the attributes that, that you look for in someone that's going to be successful? Cause I'm sure you have those like little telling. Yeah. yeah. It's people who don't need the playbook. Um, so many people come to me and say, I want to know how do I get promoted? What do I need to do to get promoted? And everybody's story is different. Everybody's journey is different. And, and every situation of the business semantics are all different. So you can't, you can't do something twice. It's just not possible. And so trying to get people who are uncomfortable with the uncomfortable and realizing that there isn't a checklist that's, you know, the, and, and I spoke with somebody who was really successful at my company and I asked her, I said, what set you apart? You've been here for about two years now. What's really set you apart? And she said, I actually embrace the change. I recognize when something's chaotic or something's changing and I walk into it and say, how can I make this better? And then showcase myself. And that's really, I mean, you Everybody's working with agile methods now. And so mm -hmm. companies before would wait three years to roll something out. And now we're just, we're, we always say we're, we're putting the wheels on the plane as it's moving. You know, it's, and somebody who can live in that mm -hmm. and realize that it's not mapped out for them, that, that's really um, the first part I, I believe of a success, I cannot say the word successful person. Um, and then curiosity, people who are just willing to question and not do the status quo. You know, not just why is that? Let, give, let me understand the full front to back of it. Let me understand the full context of why I'm doing what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. um, people who actually put themselves into that to try to not just do X, to understand this is why I'm doing it and this is the impact, that those are also vigils. And then again, the, the last thing is the teaming. I mean, it, it goes without saying that you need to be a great team player and collaborative. And mm -hmm. so, yeah. So one of the things that I ask all of my guests is podcast or book. Are there ones that you listen to, recommend? Yeah. What are they? I've always wanted to get into the podcast, but I'm just, I'm not, um, 
I don't have the patience to sit there and you, you know, and, and I, we're not driving anymore, but um, books, I love, I'm still, I, I haven't converted over the Kindles or the <laughs> reading online. So I love flipping pages, but I think, um, so I'm definitely a book person, but in terms of, of something that has more recently meant a lot to me um, in my current position and company, um, I've really embraced Simon Sinek, mm -hmm. the um, Start With Why, and, and he has a second book, um, helping people again understand your why and knowing what your why is. I think that's part of half the battle is, is what is your why, but then making sure people understand what is your why and, and the value that can, can do for you. So what have I not asked you that you think would be impactful to our listeners? Yeah. I think it goes back to that question about um, success and struggles and you know maybe um, sometimes you've been disappointed. I think in my career, um, in my career, there was a moment where I thought I was up for, I, I was up for promotion. I thought it was a sure thing I'd get it. I had that, that network behind me, but I, I, I wasn't promoted. And, um, and it was a disappointment because I had really put a lot into it. And I, and I, I you know, I, I did a lot of soul searching and, and talk. I spoke to, to many people to understand who's at the table making the decisions and, and what was it that, you know, held me back. And I, I learned it was two things. It was one, um, it's, it's not just about the person, it's about is the role there, is the readiness there, is the, if there's a readiness and then is the role. And um, there, there wasn't confidence that the role was there for me, that it, that it was at that, that next promotion level, that the scope was there for the promotion. And um, even though they felt my readiness was there. But then the second thing that was, that was shared with me um, that I, I think of in my day to day is how am I showing versatility? You can be an expert at one thing, but we need to know that if you get to this level, we can put you into any situation and you have that versatility to be able to, to adjust. And so, um, again, my, my support group came behind me and said, okay, we're going to put her into that role to show that. She's only been with us for a year doing this one role. We're going to show her. And, and so I went into a global recruitment role, which was awesome. It was great. I traveled. I, um, there were, we, had, we had nine different service centers across, across the globe. And so I would travel to India, Manila, UK, and, and loved it. Um, and, but again, it was that network that mm -hmm. helped me get the role and put me into that position. But did that for about two and a half years. And then I started to, my daughter started to struggle. Um, she was coming into her, her early teens and um, just anxiety, peer pressure, just, you know, really needed me home. And, I, and we tried to make it work. And, and hearing her cry when I would tell her I'd have, you know, that I have to do another trip and, you know, trying to, to slide out when she wasn't awake to get to the airport so that she didn't cry and hold my leg and, you know, have to deal with that. But um, I had to make a really difficult decision to, to step away from something I loved. Mm -hmm. When I was in my international role, my daughter was, was coming nine, 10 years old. And, and just, it was, she was starting to deal with a lot of peer pressure and, and really needed me around. And it became a struggle. I remember waking her up in the morning and, and Always, when I woke her up to get her ready for school, I was on a conference call. Uh, I usually we did we, we worked off of UK time, so it was usually seven a.m. calls. And for a while, I wore the badge of she's going to um, know all these different di dialects and cultures. So I, I carried that. And but then it got to the point where you know when I would mention to her, okay, I'm getting ready to go on a trip, or because I, I would be gone sometimes up to two weeks. We try to take advantage of me getting to all the countries and try to just do one plane ticket or one flight on airfare, but. Um, it just was a struggle with her. And I, I really, she started to have a lot of anxiety um, outside of, which could have contributed to me leaving, but just, you know, she was really struggling and needed me there. And my husband needed me there. And, and so I had to kind of come to, I, I went back to my network again and really spoke to a lot of them and said, what would you do in my situation? What's out there? Um, really had to make that decision of, am I, can I show my vulnerability? And I'd remembered another woman in um, in my company who shared a time where she actually went to her, her leader at the time and said her son was struggling with math and she took a step back and the company supported her. So I, I had that guidance from, from um, that conversation with her. And, and so I really just held on to that and I went in there and I was vulnerable. My, my, my leader was in India, amazing man. Um, and so I, I didn't have him face to face, which was hard to have that conversation. But I just went with my gut and said, I've, I've, I have nothing to lose. He was there to help you get to the role you're in. He's going to be there for you now. 
and, and had that conversation to say, look, it's, it's now at the point with my family. And also this was a, a risk because if I needed this role for my promotion to prove, I needed to trust that there was a role for me to move into and not take a demotion. And I didn't know that answer. And that was, oh my gosh, that was a big um, decision because I, I, as I've mentioned, I'm driven by money and I did not want to have <laughs> to work backwards again. But, you know, it was, it was a lot of trust in him to say, this is where I'm at, I am. This is what I need to do. And I need your help here. And I'm not leaving you immediately, but we need to work to this end game. Mm-hmm. And um, it was again entrusting him. And the other thing that he doesn't know um, is that I had a network of people in New York who were looking out for me, who um, who were able to also help find that other role for me to pivot to. Um, and, and you know, so between him helping me and trusting and, and, and supporting me, and then that group, we just there was I had to wait a little while, but there was a role for me to pivot. It was maybe up to three months, and me to pivot to that. That then I didn't have to take the demotion. I didn't have to, you know, I had patience, I had trust, and, and it just it worked out. Um, and then I was I was truly able to be there for the next couple of years for my daughter, which was critical. Thank you for listening to the Moms Making Six Figures podcast. If you enjoyed this podcast, please take a moment and leave a review on iTunes. To learn more about Moms Making Six Figures, head over to momsmakingsixfigures.com. That's right, momsmakingsixfigures.com.